Hi, welcome back. We're talking about if statements, and I have an example problem here. We're going to write a program for a vending machine that inputs the diameter in millimeters and the mass in grams of a coin and prints the value of the coin according to the example below. The diameter and mass must fall within 5% of both the coin's nominal diameter and mass to be identified. If the inputs do not match any of the coins, the program prints the value zero. I've got this table here with all of the possible coins, their values, their nominal diameters, and their nominal masses. Now here's an example run of the program. When we run it, it says, please input the diameter in millimeters. Maybe this diameter is 21.22 millimeters. So that looks close to a nickel right, 21.21, close meaning it's within 5%. Please input the mass in grams. Then we input, let's say, 4.98, which again is close to the mass of a nickel, within 5%. So, because it's within 5% of the diameter and the mass of the nickel, the program prints the value of this coin is 5 cents. And it has to work for all the coins, and then remember, we print 0 if it does not match any coin. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is ask the user to input the diameter. I'll create a variable, let's say d for diameter, equals input, right, because the user is inputting a value, please input the diameter in millimeters. Now, in reality, for a vending machine, there would be a sensor that measures the diameter of the coin. But, uh, you know, we don't know how to do that yet. So we're just going to ask the user to input the value. Now that will get saved as a string. Let's remember that that's a string. And we're going to have to do some mathematical operations on this thing to, um, you know, determine if it's within 5%. So we might want to just convert that to a float. I'll say d equals float d. So that takes the string d, converts it to a float, and then overwrites it as variable d. So now d is a floating point. Next, I'll say, well, I'll look at the example, and we have to input the mass. So let's call the mass m. Maybe I'll leave some space there. m equals, and we're inputting something, so we need the input function. Please input the mass in grams. Right? And then again, th that gets stored as a string. And so we're going to have to do mathematical operations on this. So let's convert it to a floating point. Great. Now we need to make the comparisons to d determine what we're going to print out. Well, we need if statements to do that. And we need to figure out how are we going to come up with 5%. And there are a couple ways of doing this. But what I'm going to do is take the, let's, let's start with the diameter, take the diameter and subtract it, put this in parentheses, take the diameter, subtract it from the first coin's diameter, right, so we have the difference, then divide it by the nominal value, okay, now we have a fraction and then times a 100%. Now we have, if you like, I'll put the, maybe you're not sure about order of operations, so maybe we'll just put the 100 over here, but it doesn't matter. So now we have the percentage that we're off. Now this thing can be positive or negative. If our diameter is larger than 19.05, this will be positive. If the diameter is less than 19.05, it'll be negative. But we, we can be you know just off 5%, so we don't care if it's above or below 5%. So we're gonna take the absolute value of this thing, which is a built-in, it comes with the standard library, loaded in, ABS. ABS is the absolute value function. So I'm going to take the absolute value of that and I'm going to compare that to 5%. So I'm going to say if that's less than, and we could we could say less than or equals, the original problem statement is a little ambiguous. You could use less than or equals. Let's use less than or equals. If that's less than 5% and 
And then I'm just going to copy and paste this because the next thing I'm going to type has a similar format. And if the mass minus, now this is 2.50 divided by 2.50, if that thing is less than 5, 5%, right? So if, if the diameter is within 5% and the mass is within 5%, then we know that this is a penny. So we're going to check the penny first just because it's listed in the table first, if all of that is true. And I'm going to put parentheses actually around the thing on the left of the and and the thing on the right of the and, although I think the parentheses are optional. Then I'm going to put a colon each if statement ends with a colon. So if that's true, right, and then we need to indent. And Python, my, my spider will do that automatically, right? But if, it, if yours does not, you need to push the tab button. Then I'm going to print the value of this coin is one cent, like that. Now, if it fails that test, I want it to compare to the next row in the table, which would be the nickel. There are a couple ways of doing this. The most efficient way would be L if. And L if space, and then that will automatically move it. It has to be aligned with the if. If yours did not automatically move, make sure that you manually move it so that they are aligned. Now I'm going to put, and I'm just going to copy this because it's going to have a similar form. I'm just going to change the diameter to the diameter of a nickel, which will be 21.21 according to my table. And same here, right? 21.21. And then the mass of a nickel is 5.00. 5.00 divided by 5.00. OK. So if it wasn't a penny, then line 29 will be evaluated and if it's evaluating to true then I have a nickel and so I want to print the value of this coin is five cents right and we're going to continue on in this way and I'm just going to copy and paste this block there's actually a better way to do this using techniques we haven't learned yet but that's okay. We're just we're getting our feet wet. Now I'm going to change this to a dime. So again, now if the penny failed on line 27, then it goes to line 29, and it, and then if that fails because we're using L if, then it goes to line 31, and we're going to compare it to the next row in the table, which is a dime. So a dime's diameter is 17.91 millimeters. 17.91. Seventeen point nine one, and a dime's uh, mass is two point five zero. Two point five zero. Two point five zero. All right. Then I want to print the value of this coin as ten cents. And hopefully you get the idea by now, All right? So I'm just going to do this a couple more times, and I won't I won't say too much more about it. Going to just go on to the quarter, 24.26. 24.26 and 6.25. 6.25. Six okay, and then we're going to change this to this value of this coin is 20. Five cents, and then I will paste another L if, and we'll look at the half dollar thirty point six one, six one, thirty point six one, and its mass eleven point thirty four. Alright, and this value of this is 50 cents. And then we have to check for the dollar. L if 26.50, 26.50. 
All right, and then a mass of 8.10, 8.10, 8 8.10, like this, and then this would be one dollar. All right, now, hopefully you understand the logic of this if statement. Then there's one last thing to do. If all of those fail, so like the default is just else, else, colon, indent. We're going to print um, the value of this coin is zero. That's what the problem asks us to do. There might be a better better way of doing that. Like if this was a vending machine, we might say like this is an invalid coin or something like that. But the problem statement said to, to print zero. All right, so the important thing here is the logic. If we insert a penny, then 27 will be true, and line 28 will be printed, and the program will just end right there. If it's a nickel, line 27 will be evaluated to false, then we'll go to 29, because L if, and that will evaluate to true, and line 30 will be printed, and then that's it, and so on. Let's say we input a dollar, a dollar is kind of the, you know, the, the worst, or almost the worst case. If we input a dollar, lines 27, 29, 31, 33, 35, and 37 will be evaluated. 37 will be true, and it will print uh, the value of this coin is one dollar. And if we input an illegal coin, that will take the longest for the computer to run. It will, it will evaluate lines 27, 29, 31, 33, 35, 37, and then it'll go to 39 and 40. All right, let's give it a run. So I'll save it, Control S, and run it. Please input the diameter in millimeters. So I'm gonna just do the test case first. It's gotta match the test case. 21.22, please input the mass in grams, 4.98. The value of this coin is five cents. Perfect, it looks, it looks beautiful, right? And you'll see again the, uh, the variables D and M, they are floating points in the variable explorer. And of course, I want to ch I want to test this out for a, a bunch of different combinations. For brevity for this video, I'm only going to do one more combination. But if this was a program you were writing, okay, you really need to test this thing to make sure that it works for all different combinations. Or you know, you know, not all, but a lot of different combinations. I'm going to try something that's kind of uh, unusual. I'm gonna, I'm going to try the uh, the penny diameter. All right, but maybe a half dollar's mass. Right. The value of this coin is zero. Right. You can't. There's no coin with the diameter of a penny, but with the mass of a half dollar. If you've ever held a half dollar, you know it's very massive. All right. Now, if this is a program that you're writing for an assignment or for anybody else, it's good programming practice to put some comments in here. Notice first um, that, or notice, I guess, that we've used descriptive names, so that helps with the readability. We've used D and M for diameter and mass, um, you know, so that, that helps us. That's very descriptive, D and M. Now we want to put maybe, if this is our program, we want to put a description of what this does. Uh, this, this program asks for diameter and mass of a coin and prints the value of the coin. Right. You don't have to go nuts here. You don't have to be really descriptive. This is just a summary. Not coined. Okay. <laughs> just a summary of what's going on. Now you want your name, right? So under that we'll put uh, author. Right. Put your name there. And uh, last updated is important, but the date, whatever the date is, you know, whatever. Put the actual date. I'm just goofing around here. And then uh, you want to comment your code. So, um, you know, uh, get 
how about this block, right? You'll see how I've blocked off my code. I've used space nicely. So this first block, lines 27, 28, um, those, uh, not percent, those get, get the diameter as a float, right? And then the next block, get the mass as a float. Right. And then here's the logic, so I might I might break this up a little bit, but um, now compare to nominal values, and I might comment like um, can be off 5%, something like that. And then I'm going to comment, it's nice to comment each one of these keep hitting the percent sign for a comment. That's MATLAB. I got MATLAB on the brain. Um, it's nice It's nice to comment like each branch of the if statement. So like this would be penny, right? And then uh, nickel, dime, quarter, quarter, half dollar, dollar and then this is the else so um, we, we definitely want to comment this because this is kind of uh, this is unusual to the program but this would be like um, default value default value is zero so that's of interest to somebody reading your code because there are a lot of ways to handle the default like you could say error or you could say like invalid coin so we want to comment, we want to make sure, you know, whoever's reading our code knows that, hey, the default value is going to be zero here. Anyway, that's the end of this demo. Hopefully that was helpful.